Wow, what a view. You know, Nottingham Castle has been a landmark here since 1068, would you believe? And once you're up here, you get a total panorama of the whole of Nottingham. Sadly, though, it's the headlines, isn't it, about Nottingham, gun crime and drugs. And we've seen the consequences, the very sad consequences of that on our TV screens, what seem to be like every night. But what's it like living on those streets where maybe your friends are victims of gun crime and you become possibly tempted by the easy money that crime offers? Well, Jeremy Ball has spent the last few months with a group of people in St Anne's who are trying to change all that. In a city Nottingham in 2005. This is a place that's been scarred by gun crime. It's a place where teenagers are losing their lives and people who live in St Anne's have had enough. My friend Brandon died, got shot. My brother passed away, didn't really do nothing. I took a third death, third person to die, for people to like say it's, it's the time. You hit the headlines, yeah, you hit the national news. The pain that I feel, it's more than a graze, it's more than a bruise. People that even don't even know her. You, if you look at some of the things, people that don't even know her are feeling it. Feeling it, so it's just affected everybody. It's like at night time, I can't stop thinking. It's like I can't stop my heart from sinking. So what's it like to grow up in a community where teenagers are being killed? This is a story of how one 18-year-old's trying to make a success of his life. Jordan channelled his energy into football. He got a place in the youth team at Kidderminster Harriers. But off the field, he was becoming notorious for all the wrong reasons. I got kicked out of school at an early age, yeah, bro. Got low grades. The only job I can really get is something like flipping burgers or something, you get me? Teachers told me, yeah, you're going to prison. You are going to prison. That's what a teacher said to me. You are going to prison. I'm here now to get me to prove wrong. Jordan was persuaded to come here to the Youth Inclusion Project. This scheme targets youngsters who've been excluded from school and are out on the streets. If you expel them or if you exclude them for whatever reason and you're not, work, you're not willing to work with them, then there's a high risk that these young people are going to access or enter one, the drug industry, you know, because, you know, it's giving them something to do, they can earn the money. Two, the gangs, to, to place or belong because they've been kicked out of school. And three, you know, we all know where the gangs and the drugs can lead to, you know. It can end up in gun crime. Anybody who walks through that door, sign upon you, have to do maths and English, GCSE level. Nobody wants to sell drugs because there's a lot of stress, you know. Nobody really wants to be shot at and things like that. But in this area and, and, and other areas, it's about economics and, and it's a means to an end. Tupac is a wicked poet. Jordan's been coming to the Youth Inclusion Project for the last four years. If you put on air, what would I be doing? I'd probably be on the streets every day, innit? Slanging drugs, drug dealing and that, innit? A lot of kids are doing it, so... There ain't no options yet. What else is to do really kind of to make money and we're not really given a chance. People do want to learn if they've got the opportunity. People want to do want to learn. I've seen certain of the so-called bad man around here get down and do the deep master GCSEs, you get me? Relax, calm down, stop what you worry about this, not about that. People will look at these young people as real life gangsters, you know. The way I see it, they're only children anyway, they're only kids who want a bit of advice and role model. And if nobody's going to go in there and offer them that, they're going to find that role model elsewhere. A lot of these young people are excluded, who are, who are leaders, you know. Um, how can I say it? Have more influence in the community than, um, than, than I do, you know, with the young people. You're a star. She's done, she's done fantastic, she has. Through working with them, they have the opportunity then to move up as mentors and then be the role models for the next set of young people. And this is what they're achieving. They designed these waistcoats for Nottingham's big issue sellers, part of a fashion project which is set up to offer a direct alternative to the drugs and guns. It's a way to make money that's glamorous but legal. This is my design that I've designed for my tracksuit. 
It's been so popular that they've started taking children from local schools and now three of the designers are launching their own fashion label. I don't want to work for anyone, I want to work for myself, but I'll be the boss. Well, I got 34 out of 40 on my maths test. To see him turn round and to see the, the lights start to click on, it's a joy to watch. You know, we, we actually see miracles happening. And like 35 out of 40 on my English. Never give up on these children, you know, because everybody deserves an opportunity. Everybody. Get involved, man. I could have seen you up there watching. Get involved. Jordan was given a life-changing opportunity too, a paid job as a mentor for the Youth Inclusion Project. That's despite the fact that he's still studying for his own exams. Did you know what you did? Now the kids are looking up to Jordan and saying, well, if he can get a job, so can I. What did Jordan do? You know, they're asking questions. What did Jordan do? You know, for him to be working now and have some status and not having to sell drugs. You know, they're asking me that. So that's a wicked role model for me. I'm an influence to the kids to say I'm still the look, they're like, like look up to me then, innit? Cause I'm like, got respect enough where I'm from, around my way. There's Jordan not passing it, you know what Jordan's football career was moving forward too. He got a trip to Jamaica for a trial with the national youth team. If I don't make a professional footballer, then teach kids to make a professional footballer. I'm trying to get my little coaching on football and that. Get, my, get the kids playing football and keep them off the street. The crime now, it's just getting younger and younger, you get me? Yeah, we've got three guys who are the sort of young people that we're targeting. Take one for your team. Take one for your team. And back in Nottingham, things were moving rapidly. Jordan and two of his friends were asked to set up a local football club. But things were about to take a turn for the worse. A teenage girl is shot dead in Nottingham. House to house inquiries are now being conducted. It could be your daughter, it could be your son, it could have been you just walking home. Today we have taken a stand in memory of Danielle Beckham and in rejection of gun crime. Thousands turned out to pay tribute to Danielle Beckham, a shooting that left the city in shock. Jordan knew Danielle well. She'd been a member of the Youth Inclusion Project. Now she was being buried in the suit which she designed there. Still feeling broken, but I'm just trying to stay strong right now. Put a dent in the heart, you get me? Me staying strong, that will help people, other, like the younger ones, stay strong. The mentors help to contain a situation. Period, fact. Fact. The mentors were able to influence certain people in the community to stay calm. Good morning. Good morning. The politicians were getting involved too, and the teenager whose teacher said he'd end up in jail was giving advice to the Home Secretary. I'm just going to make him know what's really going on in the neighbourhood. Jordan, to me, you know, is turned round, you know, his life is turned round, you know, he's a totally different person today. And that's because he's been given opportunities and a chance, and we stuck by him. It's like I can't stop my heart from sinking, remember? Tell him it's not about this gangster thing. I could easily go for a gun and just start shooting and get revenge. But it's not about that, you get me? It's about living clean, you get me? Just everyone working together and just trying to clean up this community. But that's not going to make things better, make things worse. I ain't trying to see another person dead in the hearse. I ain't trying to see another close friend of mine or even family or even me, you get me, dying over some over something that's just come out of nothing. You won by just putting down your guns. Killings, murders need to end, violence needs to end.